What is happening, Adventure Nation? Lorena has left me alone for a few days and she gave me strict instructions not to break anything. Or maybe she said to take care of some things. That might have been it. With that being said, we're gonna show you how to change the oil on an RV, so stick around. Okay, an oil change on an RV is pretty much the exact same process that you'd use on an oil change for anything, whether it be a car, truck, SUV, bus, uh, motorcycle, anything. You're going to drain the old oil, take off the oil filter, put a new filter on, refill the oil, and you're done. It's really a fairly simple process. Now, I know you guys that have, you know, mechanically inclined people, you're rolling your eyes right now, an oil change video, really? Well, I'm gonna go into a little bit more depth for those people who don't know how to change the oil, why you change the oil, the intervals where you find that information and all that kind of stuff, so stick around. And if you know how to change your oil already, go find something else to do for a little while. You don't have to watch this video. Come on inside and I'm gonna show you uh, where you can find that information. Okay, before we get started with the actual oil change, I wanna go over some information with you guys about where to actually find the information about your oil change. Now again, if you are mechanically inclined, you've done this before, you don't have to watch this video, it will bore you to death. But if you've never done this before or you're curious on where to find the appropriate information, and I'm not talking about, oh, my buddy told me, don't listen to your buddies because I'm about to tell you why. Before we get started on the oil change, we're gonna go over where you can find the information on what type of oil your coach uses and maybe the suggested intervals and things like that. Every coach should have both an owner's manual, this is the chassis manual actually, because your, your Fleetwood is not the chassis, the chassis is Ford, your coach is Fleetwood or Monaco or whatever it is, but most of them use a Ford F53 chassis. That information you get in your chassis manual. The maintenance, the schedule or the frequency of your oil change is gonna be in your maintenance guide. If you don't have that, you can find that online and download that information. On my particular manual, it tells you everything you need to know about checking your oil to what type of oil you use. Checking the oil, they say, you know, make sure you're on level ground, shows you where on the dipstick the oil needs to be, whether you need to add or the right amount of oil. It also tells you the type of oil. In this case, Ford now recommends 5W20, and I believe it changed around 03. 10W30 used to be just the go-to oil for everything, and as of 2003, I believe it was, you can Google it, Ford changed that to 5W20. I'm not gonna get into the whole, what those things mean. The first number is cold start. The second number is you're running your hot, hot temperature. It's the viscosity of the oils and all that kind of stuff. We won't get into that. But you just wanna make sure that you're using the right viscosity of oil. Now, whether you use synthetic or just a regular, a synthetic blend or regular oil is up to you. I prefer to use synthetic. It's a little bit more money, but the price has come down so much and it's so close to the regular oils now. I just figure why not use the technology that's available to protect your coach. The other thing you're gonna find is contention on the interval. You're gonna talk to people and they're gonna go, my buddy told me he changes his every 3,000 miles. Well, it, that's ridiculous. It's a complete waste of money and people are gonna go, well, it doesn't cost that much money to do it anyways. Yeah, but that doesn't make it right. So <clears throat> 3,000 miles used to be the recommended interval, and it was mostly by the oil companies and service stations. Of course they're gonna recommend 3,000 miles, and if you look at the little sticker on your car and the last time you took it in for an oil change, it's probably gonna recommend 3,000 miles. If you go into your automobile owner's manual, it's probably gonna recommend 5,000 or 7,500 or even 10,000 miles. Jaguar now is at 15,000 miles, I think, for intervals for their oil changes. Just use the interval that your manufacturer suggests. In this case, in the guide, it shows 5,000 miles. With the synthetic blend that I'm gonna use, I use Mobile One, it's just my preference. You can use Motorcraft for the Ford stuff, you can use whatever other oil you want. I prefer Mobile One. I'm probably gonna stretch it to 7,500, and in this case, I've stretched it to 8,000. It's not gonna hurt anything. I guess one of the first things I should have mentioned was why would you change your own oil for me it's convenience i it's just a pain to go down to a shop and and have them do it and sit there and wait when i'm already sitting here with the coach it's level it's on level ground and it's just so easy to do 
yeah, you save a couple of bucks, it'll, you know, buy us dinner or something like that. It's not that expensive to have your oil changed anyways, unless you're in a diesel is going to be two to three times more. But even the diesel process is the exact same that we're going to walk through right now. So let's talk about that. But make sure that you use your manufacturer's recommended intervals, the manufacturer's recommended oil, and the manufacturer's recommended filter. This stuff is really, really inexpensive. I, I think the filter for this coach, the Motocraft filter is, I don't know, six bucks or something like that. All in, I'll give you the totals at the very end, but all in, it's not gonna be that much money. So let's get into changing the oil. First and foremost, you wanna warm up your coach. Whether, and, and this, is the same process gang again car truck motorcycle rv pretty much the exact same process warm it up and then once it's warmed up a little bit let it sit for a minute or two allows all the oil because what you're doing you're heating up the motor and you're allowing all the oil to drain back into the pan once it's drained back into the pan then you can proceed to changing the oil now tools that you're going to need you're going to need a wrench to take the drain plug off in this case it's a 5 8 most of them on on these vehicles are gonna be 5 8 but again, you're just gonna to have to check that out. Always carry one of those with me. 5 8 inch socket, you're gonna need a oil filter, you're gonna need a filter wrench. You can do it by hand, but we'll get into that in a second. You're also gonna need a drain pan, and then you're gonna need new oil. The other thing I've heard lately, and maybe the newer coaches have that extra quarter of oil, I've heard several people with their V10 say they require seven quarts. This says it requires six, so, I don't know what the difference is there. This is an 06, so it's a little bit older coach. So maybe the people that I've seen doing oil changes in the in the recent videos, maybe the newer coaches are at seven quarts. I don't know. And if you guys have a, a newer V10, maybe you can let me know. But I know this is six quarts. So you need to have your oil, a drain pan to put the used oil. You need to have a filter wrench to pull off your filter and a drain plug wrench so you can pull off your drain plug. Okay, your coach is warmed up. You're now gonna go underneath and you're gonna find your drain plug and you're gonna loosen your drain plug. You may also need a funnel. A funnel will help direct the oil into the drain pan. Just makes things a little bit less messy so it's not all over your uh, frame. You know, it's not a big deal. You can clean it up after, but it's just easier if you use some type of, fil uh, some type of funnel. I actually bought a quick change, oil change thing. I'll have to do that in another video because I can't find the damn thing and uh, I'll just do it in the next oil change. So once you've taken that drain plug out, let all of your oil drain, just let it drain. And then once it is completely drained, you'll want to go ahead and remove your filter. Just remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So you're gonna turn it left and that will unthread the filter. Make sure that you dump the filter out and then you're going to go ahead and put in the new filter. Before you put the new filter in, Make sure that you add a little bit of new oil to the rubber gasket before tightening the filter. Then you're gonna hand tighten the filter onto the coach. You just wanna snug it up. And then if you want with your oil wrench, with your uh, oil filter wrench, you could give it maybe another quarter turn, but not too much. You don't wanna tweak that gasket on that. After you do that, you can make sure that the oil plug is back in the oil pan and then you can start adding your oil. Add, I would go one quart short of what you actually need, run the coach for a minute, and then add the next one. Then check it to make sure that you're at the right level. Interrupt the video here for just a second, guys. There's two dipsticks under here. One right next to the oil filler, and you would intuitively think that is where the oil is checked. It is not, that is your transmission fluid. That has to be checked with the vehicle running and I believe in neutral. I'll have to check on that for this vehicle. Uh, most vehicles are done that way. Vehicle in neutral and running. The oil dipstick is actually over here and it's quite the pain in the butt because it's very long. So once you pull it out, it's usually hard to get back in, but that's the one you want is on this side. The transmission stick actually says transmission on it. This one does not say oil on it, I don't think. <laughs> and I can't get it out. All right, that was interesting. Yeah, it does not say oil on it. You don't want to overfill it. Overfilling, there's 
you're gonna have to drain it back out. You don't wanna do that. So make sure that you are adding oil a bit at a time while you check it rather than adding too much and then having to take some out. That's an absolute mess. So you don't wanna do that. After you've done all that, you're cleaned up and ready to go. Now, one of the things that I do, and I should have mentioned this earlier, one of the things I do, I don't go buy the oil and bring the oil back. I wait to buy the oil until after I've drained the old oil. That way I can make one trip to the auto parts store. I've got the oil drained into the oil pan. I go to the auto parts store. They will take my used oil. I pick up my new oil. I come back to the RV with the new oil. I've made only one trip. If you go buy the oil, come back, drain the oil. Now you've got used oil you've got to take and go back to the, the parts store again and come back. That way it saves it for one trip. So that's it, gang. That is a, a pretty in-depth look at doing an oil change. It literally will take you probably a half hour, maybe an hour the very first time you do it. And then after that, it's a 15 minute, half hour job by the time you get all of your stuff out and, and ready to go. But it is a very, very simple thing to do. It will save you a little bit of cash. It's a lot more convenient doing it that way, especially if you do, like I said, drain the oil first, take the used oil in, dump that, pick up the old, uh, new oil and come back makes your life so much easier. So thanks for watching, gang. We appreciate you being here. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, stay up to date on everything that we're doing, and we'll see you again soon in another video. Have a great day.